Don't stop. I hate what I've become. The darkness has begun. I must confess that I feel like a monster. I feel it deeper than it's just beneath the skin. I must confess that I feel like a monster. I, I feel like a monster. I feel like a monster. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, Dawn of War 3 uh, addendum type of video. I've never done one of these. Uh, basically, you guys have asked me repeatedly to go back and relook at the game. As of this week, Relic has announced that they are no longer supporting any future plans for expansion, development, or changes to Dawn of War 3. The game has been officially abandoned, citing incredibly low user reviews and sales. To illustrate this, in comparison to Dawn of War 1, which sits at a user score of 91, and Dawn of War 2, which currently sits an average user score of 88, Dawn of War 3's Steam user reviews sit at a user score of 49, and at a last 30 days of 26. There are despite having many glowing reviews from many different game media websites, I still gave it a negative review when it was released. Many people ridiculed me for this and said, it'll be better later, it'll be better later. And I'm like, no, no, it will not. I have seen this before. I'm not saying I told you so. I am simply stating for the record that I, I predicted that this might happen and that in the game's current state, it was simply not good. Which brings us to the list of reasons why Dawn of War 3 went poorly. We begin with the biggest and foremost reason. Incomplete launch. Dawn of War 3's launch, there were things that were promised for later, the multiplayer matches were stunted at best, there was a distinct lack of ability to play against AI opponents without significant finagling at times, you basically can only play 1v1 against the AI. Except on... And now it's been expanded, but the point here being that at the beginning, we... And we still, to this day, only have... 4, 8, 11 multiplayer maps. 11 multiplayer maps. That's abysmal. 1v1... If you add in 1v1, you have 17 multiplayer maps. What? You still only have three factions. Still only have one faction campaign, one campaign in which you must play all three factions. And the game is still heavily reliant on you, the user, playing multiplayer and, and uh, battles against other players and playing skirmish battles in order to unlock your doctrine. I will tell you right now, this is very, very discouraging for new players to jump into multiplayer. So at launch, the game was not only, it was not only incomplete, but from what I can tell after several hours of play, has not had drastic improvements that people had been saying it had, it has only had minor improvements at best. Yes, the graphics are very nice, and the game is quite well done from a visual standpoint, but from a gameplay standpoint, this is a lackluster title for any Warhammer 40k series, much less the highly anticipated, highly rated Dawn of War series. So, three starting factions, lackluster story of the campaign, an incomplete launch to say the least, and from the start, from the very start as a matter of fact, the game very much had a Dota-like feel. Even to this day, the multiplayer maps feel more like a Dota or a League of Legends style gameplay than like an actual unique map. That is... That is something hard to digest, even for me. And it's a feeling that never got shaken. The multiplayer was certainly set up in a way that 
very much felt like Dota. You had units, but many of those units acted like minions, and they simply were hard counters to one another. A squad of Space Marines equipped with rocket launchers would counter most vehicles, whereas if you ran at them with machine, you ran at that same, you run at that squad with orcs equipped with machine guns or melee weapons, and that squad gets mowed down. It was a rock paper scissors format, similar to something we've seen out of Empire Ages, not Age of Empires, not Age of Empires, different st type of game referred to as Empire Age, which there are three editions of, where you had a rock paper scissors formula to combat, but that's something that's old and long since been abandoned in the RTS genre. Yes, rocket launcher troops shouldn't instantly kill most infantry, but they shouldn't also be virtually useless against other infantry. More importantly was the concept of simply paying extra money to unlock doctrines, which has been removed since then. It has been removed, but that was a disgusting feature. And it meant that players who were willing to, who didn't need, want to put the time in, could just skip ahead and be better than other players. And that, my friends, is just not fair when you paid $60 for the game to start with. But let's continue on. Balance. I'm going to be quite honest. When I look at these units, I expect them to function radically differently. I expect them to act mechanically and tactically in ways that are drastically different. However, each faction has their own version or variant, if you will, of those units. Storm Boys function almost exactly like Scorpion, Stinging Scorpions do, or Striking Scorpions, excuse me, do. Eldar, Wraith Knights work very much in the same manner that Imperial Knights do. And it's a sad truth. When I put them onto the battlefield, that's how they work. That's how they function. There's nothing I can do about it or get around it. These type of units simply are placeholders for each other. Yes, they have slightly different tactical variants, but the fact of the matter is they are balanced around being way too similar. Whereas in other 40k games, like Dawn of War 2, and even Dawn of War 1. First off, Dawn of War 1 released with six factions. You could play six different factions. The campaign only had three, four factions total? But multiplayer released with six, and then later expanded to allow you to play Imperial Guard and... So much more. By the time they were done... You virtually could play everyone. Dawn of War 2. Very similar thing. Game released. You had Orcs, Space Marines, Tyranids, Eldar, and Imperial Guard. Built into the game already. And it was expanded through Chaos Rising and Retribution. To the point of which you basically had a different campaign for each faction you could play. More importantly... Their campaigns were designed so that you played one faction story. Whether that faction, in the case of Winter Assault, which is by far the worst reviewed of the Dawn of War series games prior to Dawn of War 3, where you played two different factions for each campaign, people kind of complained about that. But somewhere they got it in their heads that anonymous replacements for unit for unit... That, act, that only have slight tactical variants, but for all intents and purposes, serve the same purpose, was okay. So rather than relying on imbalance between different factions to be the balancing factor, they tried to make everything balanced. And in Warhammer 40k, with so many different varieties of units and capabilities that's just taking any that doesn't work it takes it from being 40k to being some other rts soaked in 40k juice i honestly hope relic learns from this experience and learns a lot 
Their audience is expecting a gripping campaign that is not dry, that is not dusty, that is well play tested, that has a rhythm to it, that is the brutal arithmetic of combat that we as a player must learn. Which brings us to our next issue. Trying to put together too many different games all at once. When I say trying to put together too many different games all at once, you had Dawn of War 1, which was a very standard base building RTS, which I'm sure many of you enjoy. And I enjoy base building RTSs occasionally, but they're not my forte. I prefer RTSs in which you select your units before battle or actively call in reinforcements during the battle and must go forward with those units. So I am I personally enjoy Dawn of War 2 more than Dawn of War 1. I know many of you will disagree with me, but you can't say that Dawn of War 2 was a bad game if you take it as a Dawn of War game with a different style. Now when they tried to take both styles and merge them together is when they created a MOBA. And some people will say it's will scream at me it's not a MOBA. I don't know what I'm talking about. I hate to bring this up to you, but of the thousand plus recent negative reviews, I went through all of them. I went through the most of them, 600, that's 6 out of 10, 604 of the thousand most recent negative reviews for Dawn of War 3, Sight. MOBA-like mechanics as a reason for a negative review. That's more than a fi that's more than 50%. That's a majority of players have felt that this is played like a MOBA. Now we may all be wrong and may all be missing a point here, and I give you credit for that. But the fact of the matter is, to me, I sat down and I trudged through two hours of League of Legends, and I sat down and I trudged through three hours of Dota, and I came back and played Dawn of War, and I couldn't tell a big difference between the games. You sent out minions to claim points, to hold objectives, to slowly break their line. You sent you micromanage your heroes to forcibly destroy their heroes and break the line. That's the gameplay of all three games I just mentioned, including Dawn of War 3. The lack of... The fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, when you're playing Dawn of War 3, the hero units matter way too much compared to standard infantry and standard units and standard tanks and er everything, basically. The hero units simply rule the battlefield. Which, if you're going to have hero units, sure, they should be incredibly powerful, but they should not rule the battlefield. The balance should be more closer to World of Warcraft 3, in which hero units are potent, but if you send in a bunch of grunts, they're going to be overrun without support. And that lack, that trying so desperately to recreate Dawn of War 2 and Dawn of War 1 as a single coherent game means this game lacked direction. And it lacked a uniqueness and became a bland RTS against a wall of RTSs from which we could pick. Whether we wanted more of the Dota, League of Legends, hero experience, or more Command and Conquer, old school style base building R RTS, you couldn't really pick out any one thing about this game that it did incredibly well. Dawn of War 1 was definitely, is definitely a significant callback and has much of its appreciation loaned to us from traditional Command & Conquer style RTSs. Dawn of War 2 takes a whole lot from Company of Heroes and throws it at us and makes it meaningful. Especially if I dare mention it, the Shadow of the Horned Rat and the Dark Omen RTS game. Dawn of War 2 feels like that, especially when you get to Retribution's campaign. Which brings me to my last point. The campaign itself. Never expanded upon. Feels like an extended tutorial for how to do multiplayer. I am sorry. 
but every great strategy game I have ever played. Command and Conquer, Civilization, Endless Space, Dawn of War 1, Warhammer 40,000 Armageddon, Tropico 4 and 5. It doesn't matter what type of RTS it is. Civilization Sim, Tactical Military Strategy, Role Playing Overhead Style Game. The thing that made players play the game was the hours or sometimes days of their lives they would invest in playing the single player game. Even more recent titles like Orcs Must Die and Orcs Must Die 2. Medieval and the Total War series have proven this without a shadow of a doubt. Single player experience is what an RTS must focus on if it wants to stand out. There's no getting around that. There's no denying it or bypassing it or thinking that you can make a multiplayer RTS that we're going to pay $60 for and want. You're catering to the wrong audience. The free-to-play audience will want the multiplayer experience. Dawn of War has never been focused on the free-to-play audience. Even Battlefleet Gothic Armada has a gripping, long campaign. Even if the campaign is not what you're really there to play. You're there to play the multiplayer in the skirmish mode for most of the time that, I, that you spend in it. The campaign is still really good. There's a reason for that. Because while you stay for the multiplayer, you only become addicted to the, an RTS type of game through the single player. And that is by far Dawn of War 3's biggest failing. We expected a good single player experience. And we didn't get it. Hell, the third mission in the campaign is a long trudge through the trenches as you play orcs who only have access to shoot a boys and slug a boys. And that's it. Who thought that was a good idea? Excuse me, the fifth mission of the campaign. But the point is, the second time you play the orcs, it's literally a multi-hour slug with the most basic of units, and you just want to pull your hair out. Who thought it was a good idea to only have a 17 mission campaign for three different factions combined? That means each faction gets six missions. There's no chance in an RTS for any particular faction to stand out, to grip the player. The story has too many different side characters going on in a single campaign. And in my opinion, that is the biggest failing. All of you might even agree with me when I point the following out. How long did you play Dark Crusade? Single player campaign. How long did you play Soulstorm with your friends? Single player campaign. Did you play through the Winter Assault campaigns even though they weren't they are labeled as not the best? Did you play through the original Dawn of War campaign and put it down and not come back? Did you play through all of the Dawn of War 2 campaigns before you ever touched the same multiplayer modes? I know I did. I know that I kept coming back to Retribution because I wanted to play, finish the Tyranids. Or I wanted to play the Orcs campaign. I wanted to see what it was like to be a Tyranid. Even though many of the missions were the same and cookie cutter, they were still fun. They still were worth playing because there was a gripping story for each faction that I could play that could suck me in for hours. And that's the truth. But then we get to this game, and the campaign, once you get past the initial couple slog missions, runs for five hours. That's it. 
You paid $60 for five hours of content if you didn't want to step into the multiplayer and you were just waiting on new release. Who wants that? That's disturbing and twisted and sick. I know that Relic, nor Sega, nor the majority of the Dawn of War 3 fans will never see this video. That doesn't stop me from being any less passionate and any less accurate at researching the facts and trying to examine what went wrong. And at the end of the day, that's everything that went wrong that turned this... Understand, a Dawn of War game has a certain level of expectation for how good it's going to be. The hype train for this game was... A cascade of an unstoppable force. The marketing campaign was picture perfect excellent. And then the actual product delivered was incomplete at launch. Which means the version I have to review at launch is an incomplete game. With promised updates for later. But we've all seen before that promised updates for later usually don't happen or they happen too little too late and those promised updates for later are never going to happen and now this series has been officially tainted and potentially permanently cancelled by a game that had so much expectation behind it and then didn't deliver any of it only starting with three factions critical mistake even the first game started with five Sorry. And don't don't go off and say Dawn of War 2 didn't start with it. Yes, it did. Because out the gate I could play Tyranid, Space Marine, Eldar, and Orcs. I could start with four. I had one more. And very shortly after release you could start playing you could play the Imperial Guard. The emphasis on multiplayer Again, it's probably the last nail in the coffin here. They didn't realize what made the first two games great and memorable was our single-player experience that then combined with a multiplayer experience with friends. The writing for the story isn't nearly as good. The story campaign is not even a half of the campaign length of any other Dawn of War game. Tell me, when you were playing Dawn of War 2, because I know a lot of you did, even if you didn't like it, you still played it, how often were you sitting there optimizing your squad for one particular mission, all because you didn't know for sure if you had the right combination of guys going in? How many days did you agonize about when the next time you were going to be able to sit down and do four hours of Dawn of War 2 to just to get through the next mission. Just to grind your way through it and feel like the entire time was an epic struggle in which you had to constantly shift your tactics. And then playing through this game, when did you ever feel like that? How many of you went back and played Dawn of War 2, or the arena mode? The multiplayer mode for, for Dawn of War 1? After you had played the campaigns, after you had sunk your heart and soul into a strategy campaign, did did you play multiplayer out the gate or did you go sink your heart and soul into that? And yet here we have a Dawn of War game that expected you to want to play multiplayer first and that the campaign just served as an extended tutorial. And we wonder why we're pissed off and it failed. We wonder why people are coming out defending it and trying to say that it wasn't that bad and the fact of the matter is it's not that it was bad for an, for a standard run of the mill RTS it's not a bad game but for a dawn of war Warhammer 40,000 when you put that title in front of it this is not even mediocre for that kind of a series. This is so far into the subpar range that this feels like a demo for Dawn of War 3. Like, 
a beta test for Dawn of War 3 than the actual Dawn of War 3 that we were promised and that we expected. And I tried to set aside my expectations and review the game as is, but when I stack it up against Dawn of War 1 and 2, it's like trying to stack up a run-of-the-mill Budweiser against a premium German Jaeger beer from Germany itself versus a run-of-the-mill Budweiser and put them into the same contest. There's simply no comparison as to which one I would rather enjoy with my steak versus what I would like to have at the family-friendly barbecue that I'm not paying for. This is the family-friendly barbecue that I'm not paying for. This is not the premium steak that I wanted to sit down to. And that's the truth. This has been Fiora, letting you guys know exactly how Dawn of War 3 failed. And why it failed. And hopefully... This may get back to Relic Entertainment and Sega. And they sit down and they look at what's going on with Total War Warhammer 2 and realize that just like the Dawn of War titles, the majority of players' time spent in Total War Warhammer and Total War Warhammer 2 has been campaign time, not multiplayer. And who knows? Maybe they'll realize that. Maybe the series won't die yet. But that's up to Sega, Games Workshop, and Relic Entertainment. This is Fiora, signing off for now. Good night, everyone. So if you guys found that video entertaining, please do hit the like button. Here's a previous review for you guys. It's uh, Armored Warfare. Here's the original review for the My Dawn of War 3 when it first came out. And uh, do subscribe. Make sure that if you didn't like this, hit the dislike button. But more importantly, leave me a comment to come back to. Talk with me. Interact with me. Have fun. I'll be on live stream later this afternoon. In the meantime, I'll see you guys there. Good night, everybody. Look for the live stream announcement on this channel. And if you got a dollar or two, consider supporting Patreon. Because that's how I pay for the amount of research I have to pour into these games. That's how I pay for the research I pour into my research topics, and that's how I pay for basically everything that I do. In the meantime, good night, everybody.